Greetings, mortals, and welcome to The Broken Pact, the mythic odysseys of Theros show on twitch.tv slash saving throw show, sponsored by Wizards of the Coast. I am your dungeon master, or should I say, your Therosian chorus for this adventure, Ruben Bressler, and these heroes are my players. Please introduce yourselves. Hi everybody. Uh, I guess we're just going in the the order we we the often way, go. That we always go. Normal right? order. The order we, we have done the last five episodes. We're doing that. We've sort of figured it out by now, right? <laughs> and the Hi, last three I'm Jordan. I play Astaroth. He's a Minotaur who fights and is part of the Boros Legion, but not here because we're on Theros, and the Boros Legion doesn't exist besides me. So I'm just on the crew fighting and uh, and and doing. The fighter stuff. That's hey, everybody. great. <laughs> yeah. Hey, everybody. I am Riley Silverman, and I play Safia. Safia is a native of the Plain of Theros, and she is a follower of Thassa. She is Nyx-born, and she has a pet crab. Oh. Right side up. Yeah. Hooray. Um, hi, I'm Daniel Radford. I play Lydia. Lydia is a uh, human rogue. Lydia is also native uh, to Theros. Lydia also worships a funny word. Uh, that's a, uh, in, in a way that, you know, uh, did you ever get those magazines as a kid and then you put out your crush all over your room? That's kind of where uh, Lydia and Thassa are at. But Thassa noticed me, so. <laughs> and we have a guest star this week. Yay! <laughs> Go ahead and Hi, yourself. I'm Gabe. Oh, you want uh, to, yep. I was going to say you can you no, can ahead, save your character or you can not. Up to you. Okay, okay. Uh, so, hi, I'm Gabe. I am a cosplayer, voice actor, game designer. I'm the in-house game designer for Roll Twenty, uh, and I am playing Duda. Uh, but that's all that I'll say for now before we get to meet this absolute chaos child. Oh yeah. That's what yeah, I like exactly. to hear. All I know is absolute chaos, child, and I'm already in. <laughs> I'm in it. So I'm so excited. I'm and I'm so pleased that you're here. Uh, Ashlyn uh, could not join us tonight. She is uh, uh, otherwise indisposed, um, but we are fortunate enough to have Gabe step in. Which thank you so much. We're also fortunate enough to have uh, a pair of sponsors uh, with us this evening. First off, Hero Forge. All right, Hero Forge, minis with full color options and loads of customization from combat wheelchairs, awesome, to banners of war. Make your favorite characters using their hero creator system. Check out heroforge.com for more info or enter chat command, uh, exclamation point, Hero Forge. Hey, and while you're looking for cool things to have at your gaming table, check out our friends at Die Hard Dice, where you can save 10% off by using the code NATURAL20 at checkout. Use command DHDICE in chat for links and info. The code only works till the end of this month, so get it now or be an April fool. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize to our friends at Die Hard Dice for that. Um, I would like to recommend instead of that joke that you enjoy our friend CB's dice set that you can also get 10% off at at Die Hard Dice. So you're like double helping friends because you're helping out our channel and you're also helping out uh, CB and you're helping yourself to an awesome set of Die Hard Dice. And you might be thinking, Riley, aren't Die Hard Dice only used for Christmas time? No, you can use them any time of the year. And so head on over to Die Hard Dice Dice by using the code DH Dice in chat for links and info. They awesome. do roll better around Christmas, though. Just coincidentally. Well, but you want to make sure that you have them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You That's can actually want... hear the bells ringing if you roll them on a train on the way to the North Pole. So it's actually perfect. <laughs> True. We also want to welcome any watchers of the VOD on YouTube or listeners of our podcast and uh, remind you to like, comment, subscribe, and tap the bell so you never miss another video from us. We love hearing from you all, so long as you're nice. So please go ahead and uh, leave a review and some comments. You can also send a toast here to the crew, which we will read out loud live via tips or bits or gifted subs. Uh, for $15, 1,500 bits, or five or more gifted subs, you can submit a kind and clean message, and we'll read it live. Your support helps keep the channel operating, and the cast's paid, so thank you. Much I just want to point out that both myself and Gabe saluted the people we were thanking for listening to the podcast. <laughs> 
I like didn't even realize. Did. You, both did. <laughs> I, you did it, and then I started doing it with you, and then I'm like, wait a minute, what are we doing? They're listening to a podcast. <laughs> Same brain. <laughs> hey, and I, I might have saluted too. If you're listening to the podcast, there's no way to verify. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, since this is our first guest of the season, I did want to thank the anonymous sponsor. We do have a, another sponsor this season who um, said uh, that they wanted the show to have guests when we lost our other guest sponsor but they didn't want to be credited on air. So anonymous sponsor, thank you, Wh whoever you may be. Um, and with that, I think it's time for us to dive back into the world of Theros and the Broken Pact. Episode 5, Bearer of the Heavens. The stars above reflect off of the glassy eyes of an awestruck crab, staring with wonder at the purple sky. Nyx is an endless plane of existence where the powers of potentiality and belief hold sway. It is the realm of the gods, of beliefs given form, of dreams, and of rising and fading philosophies. From here, the pantheon of Theros watches the mortal world and guides the living. Though the gods live in a veritable paradise, they can't sever themselves from the mortal world entirely, because to do so would be to lose faith, would be to lose the faith of their followers, the source of their magic, and a power they will not easily relinquish. The Moray and her crew of Sophia, Lydia, Astarok, and Tuturu are on a quest, as heroes do, to save the world. Granted a vision by a sphinx who sent them to an oracle at the edge of the world for interpretation, the party is on a journey to pass the trials of Theros's 15 gods, and they decided to begin their journey in the realm of the gods. Having convinced Krufix, the god of horizons, that their mission is of the utmost importance, they passed his test, and now they sail on to new adventure. And that is where we pick up our story. You all left the Tovian fields where Krufix holds court and you're now sailing on the Mystic Sea, a body of mist and water that hides endless secrets in its depths, both literal secrets that manifest from mortal minds and unimagined concepts not yet fully formed. It's about six days travel to get to the nearest uh, of the starfish on your map. If there's any preparations that you'd like to do, um, or other things that you'd like to discuss, now is a good time. Boy, it feels like this journey's taking twice as long as it normally does to go from one I, place to the other. I was thinking the same thing. It feels like it's been two weeks instead of one week. It's I mean, look, I'm pretty new to this travel thing, but I just... Uh, Feels like normally about the amount of time it takes us to get somewhere was doubled. Well, you know, the thing about Theros as, as a world, I don't know if your world is like this, but a lot of times maps aren't very useful here because things kind of adjust based on just like the heck of it. Um, and then like we're in the realm of the gods, so it's probably like extra that. All right. I mean, yeah, I kind of get it. Like, Gruel territory, they, like, break stuff. So if they break buildings that weren't Gruel territory, it sort of becomes Gruel territory, and it kind of... That's... Yeah, so it's kind of like that, but gods instead of, you know, hooligans. I mean, the gods are pretty hooligan-y, if I'm being honest. If you've ever met, like, Mogis uh, and Iros, those two, oh, boy, they go at it. They are hooligans. Yeah, sounds fun. What is a hooligan? 
Um, me. Oh, yeah, then I was right. I was 100% accurate. As you sail through Nyx, uh, you are leaving the calm seas and getting to a little bit more choppy waters as you approach uh, the next stop on your journey. And in the distance, you can see uh, what looks like a volcanic island that you approach after about six days of travel, which uh, you can note down for... Um, use of the uh, the ship and other uh, whatever other things that have cooldown times. I believe um, it actually makes the ship now fully charged because that was nine days and then we've had three days prior to get to Kruvix and now we're here. So that should be perfect. We're in ship shape. There you go. Hey, perfect. Hey. Um, and uh, there are, you can see dotted around you, but not necessarily on top of you, uh, storm fronts and dots of lightning and thunder, uh, half dozen or so, all around you on the flat plain of the ocean as you approach this volcanic island. Uh, and as you get closer, atop which you see a bit of a, uh, a, a domed temple that has um, a, a, a capula atop it, a, a half dome uh, with a hole in the center, large marble pillars, and all around there is volcanic smoke that is giving off lightning and thunder and noise and fervor. And uh, it appears as if you may have arrived at your destination. All right, so uh, which, which guy is this supposed to be? Can you tell by the capula? <laughs> um, so I think this is, um, Karanos, the god of storms and thunder and things like that, which is evidenced by the... Sure, the storms and thunder, right? Yeah, right, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, um, which is cool, because, like, I mean, like, he's not my god per se, but I feel like my god lets me tap into a lot of what he has to offer, so yeah. I wouldn't say, like, Karanos. Like Caron is just like my home, my my buddy, but like I think we're probably pretty cool. Like it's like family, or I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Lightning you, you, you buddies. Like, yeah, yeah. Lightning buddy. Sure. I mean, you, you toasted that guy. You know the the uh, the the big cyclops guy with with uh, lightning. That's that's pretty stormy, right? Yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, I've never really seen that much of your power before and i gotta say i knew i picked the right ship when i came on here uh that was pretty amazing and i would i i can't wait till you have to do it again hopefully without the murder but you know if I someone mean, gotta be murdered they gotta be i mean I'm, I'm not gonna lie whenever i have to unleash like a lightning bolt on someone there's probably gonna be a murder happening there's not like a whole lot of peaceful lightning bolting um just like as a general rule it's it's a pretty it's not like a prank it, it's pretty much a it's pretty much a death weapon. Yeah. Well, then I can't I be guess... like, oh, let me send you a non-lethal lightning bolt. Well, then I guess I do want to see someone get murdered. I don't know. Lightning is cool. I mean, lightning is pretty cool. Uh, there is a place where you can dock your ship. Uh, it seems there's a small pier uh, and stairs leading up to the temple. All right, let's All right. let's shall. So, uh, how how generally uh, friendly is this guy to people just showing up on his steps? And we we get out and start going. I'm having this conversation as we're yeah, walk and talk. Um, I can't say that I've ever actually like had a conversation with him because he's not my god, and like I don't tend to go to other gods' temples and worship them. So, because like that's kind of like a thing that when you have a god that you serve, they're not big fans of. Hmm. So, um, I mean, just based on like divine domains, he's probably tempestuous. All right. Well, let's just, you know, get in the right mental pr uh, preparation if we are going to get smote on the way up the stairs, you know? I don't know what that T word means. And then Lydia just starts walking up the stairs. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Uh, the closer you get to the summit, the uh, brighter orange that it gets, as it seems that the temple itself gives off some amount of electricity like a Tesla coil, um, and lightning jumps from the clouds to the temple and back. Um, 
several of the alcoves that are entrances to this temple have statues in them, um, but there are also many entrances uh, in this sort of circular uh, temple. And as you approach, the sounds of electricity and music and um, hammers and the sounds of creativity sort of fill the background around you as the thunder strikes in this sort of odd cacophony. I imagine you guys might notice that Astarok looks like not as surprised by this as you would expect. He's kind of like, oh, I get it. He's like the is it. Honestly, I'm actually second guessing my original theory because if there's a volcano here and there's like hammering and stuff, we might be at the wrong god. I mean, at the wrong god, because we have to go see all the gods, but maybe this is Perforos. Yeah, well, I mean, whatever it is, I mean, it's got the, the bolts of electricity going around, all these things, and people making stuff. Seems like there's some dangerous interaction with nature going on. I've got these types back where I'm from, so. Okay, cool. I, I guess I'm kind of one of those types, so I actually shouldn't judge. But, um, let's yeah, you find explode out. a little less often than they do, as far as I can tell. <laughs> Well, so you give me can... a few drinks and you'll change your mind. <laughs> so you can walk in uh, to the temple and there you see, well, would you like to tell them what they see? Oh, you're muted, I think. Yes, I was. Uh, and this, this is Dura. Yeah. You see a Goliath with markings all over his body, but the markings themselves look like lightning bolts coming down across his face, over the back, down his arms. And as they go down his arms, they split into smaller, smaller bolts, uh, a single bolt going across each of his fingers and a mace in his hand, a look of excitement in his eyes. And he just turns to see all of you. Oh. I did not think, I did not think that it would be visitors here. But my God continues to be right. Hello. <clears throat> hey. Hi. Hi. And what brings you to the home of Garanos? Oh, I was right the first time. You were right yeah. the first time. I should trust my instincts. I keep saying that about you. We'll work on that. Friendship. Uh well, uh, uh, I'm uh, I'm Astarok. I, uh, I'm a Minotaur. It's uh, it's nice to meet you. He holds out his hand. He takes yours, and it's it's a strong clasp to it. All right, I I can I can tell I like this guy already. Yeah, I'm uh, yeah, uh, uh, it's nice to meet you. You're 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 big. Yes. Uh, hiya, I stick out, uh, Lydia sticks out her hand. My name is Lydia, nice to meet you. Uh, cool party, like the music. Ah, oh, yes, it is, it is music. That is like magic. It surges, it is beautiful, it grows. Ah, uh, nothing like it. And it takes cool, and she shakes it like a moron. <laughs> <laughs> just really, just really fast and sloppy. <laughs> okay, energy, I, I, you would fit in well. Hi, I'm 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 Sophia, um, and I, I she's um she, she's a half Triton. Um, she's Nick's born. She has like this like glowing blue hair, and she's wearing like these like kind of flowy robes and this like kind of like starry looking cloak sort of thing over her. It looks like it's made out of some like really finely woven seaweed in some way. But what I think you would notice if you're if you're a cleric of Karanos, you probably would notice she's carrying what's a, essentially a staff version of a wand of lightning bolts. So it's like a piece of blue agate that has been mm. like carefully like like shaped by the ocean into this perfect little shape that has a couple of bolts at the end of it. And yeah, you can probably tell that it's like bustling with like uh, lightning energy. A child of lightning, you would fit in. You and I are uh, of the same same position, I would say. But uh, I am not a cleric of bolts as you are. I am a cleric of life because the life that my God has given me, ah, I live it well. 
So you can't throw lightning bolts? <laughs> I never said that. <laughs> Her eyes light up. Well, uh, we're, uh, we're, we're kind of just, you know, hopping around to different places here on Theros, and uh, we just wanted to talk with your boss, basically. Can we, uh, I don't know, get a meeting? Oh, you you would like to speak with Garanos himself? Yeah, we've got a couple of things we're supposed to ask him. You know how it is. You got to, like, tromp from one place to the other and just walk up to gods and try and talk him into stupid stuff. May, may I ask why? God stuff. Just God stuff. The stuff that gods do. Yeah, um, we, gotta even... we got a mission from, uh, like, a celestial lady about like future of Theros existing and she told us that we had to go and talk to all of the gods and then we would do that yes yeah, so you yeah. like Theros right this is uh if we don't do this then um bye bye Theros so. yeah. There are these things called uh, the, the world trees and they they kind of connect all these different like worlds you know you know like Nyx is a place and then, like, regular Theros is a place. And then the, you, you, whatever the your underworld is, is also a place. Well, like, there's even more places. And the, the trees uh, got roots that kind of go through all the different places. But uh, there's a problem with the one that's in Theros. And, and it's uh, going to make the whole place fall apart. Uh, unless we get the gods to, like, release an ancient evil or something like that. Okay, that is a lot to process and pass, but... Um, I don't really know what it means. I've just kind of figured out how to say it over and over again if people ask. And people he's, keep asking. It's weird. Yeah, they yeah. do. I mean, he's, I, he's not usually very open, but I assume he would make an exception for something of this. Um, what are your names again so I can introduce you properly? Oh, yeah, it, it's Astarok. And actually, Astarok. how... How gauche of me. I, I, I didn't give you my credentials. And um, <laughs> Astarok pulls out just like a piece of parchment that's just barely readable. It's been like soaked in water and crumpled up like many times. And uh, it, it just says on it, it has a, a signature that seems to say Aurelia. And it, it certifies him as a Wojek of the Boros Legion. This is clearly the sort of document that is meant to be like framed not like folded up and kept in the front pocket most of the time, but it does have his name on it. That's my letter. It's from an angel. I will return very quickly. I mean, and he probably like he's mumbling to himself, like almost like a little confused and concerned. Like it, it seems legit, but who are these people? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then I, he'll probably just go and try to uh, try to pass on the message to Karanos to get them an audience himself. Jordan, so, I love that your <clears throat> your Boros paper has become essentially the same power as Velma's Demir Multipass mm -hmm. without actually having <laughs> any magical enchantments on it. It's great. He just gives it to people with a lot of confidence. <laughs> uh, so you have a few moments to yourselves while Duda is... Uh, seeking an audience for you all if you wish to do anything during that time. Uh, otherwise, uh, Dura would return after a minute or so, probably. Yeah. Okay. I, um, I, he does wish to speak with you, uh, but he did not seem surprised, which is, <laughs> Geranos is a god, so of course not, but Follow me this way, please. Lead the way. So you are uh, led inside into a inner chamber of the temple. And as you do that cacophonous noise of creativity, of, of welding, of uh, creation and of destruction and, and molding of things and music. And the music that you hear is brought to us by our good friend with Wherewithal. Uh, who gave us a toast to the tune ah. of That's Amore. <clears throat> <laughs> when all Nyx hits your eye like a big starlit sky, sail the more. <laughs> when the gods praise 
praise you do sing with a great pious ring. Sail the more when Thassa makes you drool, just like a drunk pirate fool. Sail the more. Thank you. We're, we're amazing. Uh, amazing. And also, thank, you, thank you for the raid, Zombie Orpheus. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, welcome. Oh, thank you. you. That was also, an Jake, pitch. thank you for catching the gag of what why the moray is called the moray. The mm -hmm. Fassa moray. Fassa moray. Oh, I didn't get that. Damn. <laughs> it's nice. So you're led into a large central uh, audience chamber, uh, and upon a massive stone throne before you appears a gigantic kind of purple man. Um three stories tall sitting and broad chested uh, made of star stuff. This is clearly Keranos himself and he looks down at you. I think I would bow or I would like curtsy out of respect because this is a god so close to my temp my domain and like my, my own god so I think I kind of like show like a clear sign of deference and, and appreciation. Uh Lydia doesn't know what to do. She wants to run up and shake a hand again, but she's feeling like maybe that's not good vibes. So she just kind of copies and does like a very low bow. Uh, yeah. Astrak does the same thing. Rise. So, why are you here? What, well, I would like to hear it in your words. Um, so well, you, know, you guys I, want to take it? Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, well, I just, I'll just mention the, 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 so Theros is, you know how it's here and we all really like it, um, yes. but it's going to go away because there are these world trees that like connect all of us together with different dimensions and different areas. And uh, our world tree is, and she does a big thumbs down. Um, our world tree is trash. And so um, we have to go and meet up with all of the gods so we can like fix it so that we can continue uh, to be on Theros, which is a place that we seem to all like a lot. Yeah. So y'all, you know how y'all um, cut out the fifth Titan and like locked him outside the world and like that's good because like it seems like it's real scary and yes. rough but the the thing that you did to keep him out also keeps out energy from other pieces of creation that are needed to keep this creation going so if, like if that if that hose doesn't get turned back on then eventually this whole aquifer is just going to dry up and what lydia said yeah what she said but why oh, is this a good idea it. what why is this a good idea why is there no better option uh, well, we weren't really put in charge of the planning, the process. We were kind of just put in charge of the go talk to all the other gods and do feats of, of impressiveness to open the, like, if you and the other gods can all get together and think of a better option, like, we're open to it. Like, we are open to negotiation. You really believe you can do this? Get I all mean... of us to connect, make these changes, do... To any of this well we are batting a hundred percent right now on our attempts so to be fair we've just encountered to? yeah one god crew fix <laughs> okay so what are you asking of me then it, well I, I guess at this point we just want you to like throw your lot in with the other gods and and Everybody come together. I mean, you're all gods of the same plane, so... Yeah. Like... You agree to open the door, too. Um... Maybe. But, uh... How can you prove what you say is true? So, what we were told is that if you go to the borders of the world, the temple at the end of the world, edge of the world, world's edge and look out where Ther Theros meets Nyx and the Underworld, you can actually start to see the fraying of reality starting to undo itself. Um, I'm not going to lie. I don't know what that looks like. So 
that could be something you would be able to tell, but that's that's what we were told. Um, so right. we had a vision from a sphinx. Meta, oh yeah, Metomai, who told us to come to the world's end and learn. So we've kind of just we've kind of just been like following visions. Would you consider yourself bold, brave even? I'm brave as crap. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty damn bold. It's a very bold. strange analogy, but it seems like a mortal one. Sure. Um, then I offer you a challenge. And if you can meet my challenge, it'll give me an opportunity that I would like. And you may earn my favor. Okay. All right. Seems fair. Mm hmm. And you'll have to sail, and it will not be easy oh, to meet an associate of mine. Do you think you can hold up the world? Uh, well, I mean, wait, like the whole world? Like in yes. our hands? Like the whole world would be in our hands. In a sense, yes. The whole wide world in our hands. <laughs> the whole world in your hands. We'd have the whole world in our hands. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, I'm I'm pretty strong most of the time, but uh, that that seems like a lot to carry. It is. Mm. Alcyonis, Alcyonis does it on his own. But if you three, if you three can manage to hold the world for three days. You give me time to speak to Alcyonius, who has seen what is happening. And if what you say is true, and you prove you can do something, sometimes seemingly impossible, maybe you will are my favor. Okay. I, I, yeah, I just gotta get right. a little bit of clarification here. Yes. Because sometimes I found when you when you're dealing with like tasks and these great deeds and stuff, you find out that it's all a metaphor. Mm -hmm. And I come into this thinking that holding the world is gonna mean like I don't know, holding a big thing up really hard. Uh but it could end up being like, I don't know, representing the people of Theros or, or something. Are we in, like, metaphor territory here, or are we going to hold stuff? The person I need to speak to, Alcyonius, is a giant who holds up the world. All I right. need to speak to him. To do so, you need to hold the world for him. Okay. I need three days. It, well, yeah, you know, actually, I'm, I'm much more comfortable not in the metaphor territory, so as daunting as this task seems, in some ways, that's comforting. You just have to avoid dying while you get there. Yeah, so far, if we've done that okay, right? I, I avoid dying every day, so I'm actually <laughs> yeah. pretty good at it. I'm not dying right now. Yeah, and I'm actually, like, from here. I'm from Nyx, so I feel like if I die, it probably kind of just works itself out. Yeah, I don't know what happened to die here. Next is a terrible idea. Oh, well, then I, I don't want to do that then. No, no. It's, uh, hmm. Drowning is terrible, yes. Imagine having to drown over and over and over. I don't, I don't know how to drown, so that's fine. <laughs> I breathe, I breathe. I hope you never find I breathe out. underwater, so it probably won't happen. See, that's the thing. What if they take away your breathing? Well, then I feel no like anything is possible here, child. Touched by lightning. Anything. Okay. All right. And the one you follow, I'll probably be a little bit easier to convince than uh, they are. I've heard a little bit about your exploits. All of us have. We speak to one another. And some of them have opinions. Strong ones. 
Anyone good strong ones? Or... Did Basson mention me? Oh. Oh no. Not you per se, but she does have something was taken and she's very upset about it. Oh. Very upset. Uh, well, I guess we can cross that bridge when we get to it, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how long can a god stay angry? <laughs> Wait, are you truly asking? He's not well, from I mean, here. You... He's not from here. So that might oh, be oh. a part, part of it. Like, um, I don't think he knew what a god was until like three days ago. So. Well, not in such a direct sense. <laughs> What's a god to a man, anyways? A god? Yes, good answer. <laughs> See, you're smart. Yeah. She starts patting herself. It seemed like a trick, trick, but it actually was the right answer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I will not yeah. make you go alone. Not now. I'll send a child of mine with you. Duda. Did, are you talking about me? Yes. You will go. Do I have a choice in this sort of... <laughs> yes, Karanos. Thank you, Dora. No go. I wish you luck. I do want to see you rise to the challenge. But if you fall, well... Uh, the fates have decided such then. Off. It was a. Uh, it was nice talking to you, Mister uh, yeah. uh, Storm God, sir. Bye. You can call me Keranos. Oh, Bye, Karen. okay. Uh, yeah. Later, Carrie. Uh, I, I do my bow. I do my bow again, and kind of like oh. back out. And the as room. you, as your ha eyes come back up, you see that what where once the man sat, it's now a swirling cloud of purple smoke that rises back into the storm clouds and the volcanic ash, and uh, you are led out of the chamber. That was very unexpected. He, he, he is. A god that I respect, but does not speak to very many people. Yeah, well, hang out with us for a little while. You know, crazy stuff happens. Yeah, we fought. We fought a Cerberus. Yeah, it was pretty fun. Why? They made us. Yeah, we were in a prison. Yeah. Who are you, people? Honestly, I'm I'm Sophia, <laughs> and this is Astarok. And I've got a lad. And that's hey, two Tutoru. She's being very quiet today. Right. There is Tutoru still here who has stayed quiet for the most part, but they are in uh, a Loxodon, an elephantine person uh, wearing flowing robes and lots of green insignias. Uh, and she's kind of our ace in the hole for holding the world up, I think, because she's pretty strong. I think, and, yeah, that's a bad. Oh, God. Uh, well, Keranos has asked me to guide you. Uh, a delightful group of powerful individuals to save Theros. Yeah, you know, like in the like in the stories. Like we're gonna we're gonna have our own epic poem. We had a poet who was with us, but he was like, I don't think he was a very good poet, and he kind of realized it. I think he might have had imposter syndrome when he took off. Yeah, mm. I kind of miss Danny. <laughs> what happened to Danny? He left. He, he just like, didn't want to go on the boat. Yeah, like he was like, hey, I'm going to follow you and learn all about your epic journey. And then we were told like, hey, here's your epic journey. And he was like, I'm good. And then he left. Did you kill him? No, he left. Just, I just had to ask. Yeah, yeah, no, I actually, that's a pretty fair yeah, question. I, I mean, just with what you know about us. Nothing. I, I don't like to kill things unless they're like actively trying to kill me or hurt my boat. That's a good mindset, Sophia. I like that. And speaking of the boat, you can approach the moray, uh, which is a keel boat. It's about 50, 60 feet long. 
Um, it has, uh, as a godly man yourself, you can tell that it is um, rife with the energy of Thassa, the god of the sea. Um, it is a beautiful ramshackle boat that has been put back together many times and uh, has a little bit of the, uh, the junk kind of quality to it. Um, the junk, the style of boat, as opposed to, you know. Anyway. But a little bit of both, actually. A little bit yeah. of both, for sure. <laughs> yeah, you junk can definitely tell that someone has, used, someone has used mending a lot on it to replace pieces and, like, reestablish, like, like re-weld, essentially, new pieces to it over time. And, yeah. Uh, and, Dura, you know the way to go, and so you can set sail. Yep. Um, it is uh, not terribly far, but I will have you roll a d20 for me to see if you oh, no. run into any trouble on your way. Oh, Dora, while you're rolling, you would also notice that the banner on the ship has a pair of moray eels that are like entwined around it. But it is also you specifically see the symbol of Karanos on it as if like it was printed on it. But you also kind of get a sense, maybe because we're Nyx especially, that it's it's whatever the symbol of like what you would find a friendly banner to be. Oh, I like that. I like that very much. I do too. It's really cool. It's yeah, it's the Boros Legion yeah. symbol. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That's, yeah. It's awesome. So, uh, yeah, go ahead and roll a d20 for me. That's an 18. Nice. Ooh, oh, good. Ooh, that's fun. Right. Maybe nice. Um... <laughs> Let's roll. Roll a d8. What? Um, as, oh, you that's are, worse. as you are, uh, it appears as if you do have to go through a storm in order to get to where you're going. Mm. That's a seven. Oh, okay. Oh face. Well, this is, this is what <laughs> the thing said. Um, you enter the storm and you can immediately feel necromantic energy emanating <laughs> all around you um as uh it's fun ghosts howl and the storm winds swirl and um the visages of long dead mariners uh intermixed with the purple star stuff of nix uh approach the sides of your vessel um, I suppose we should be rolling initiative in that case. Oh. Oh. That, was, that, was a, that was a fortunate couple rolls we got. A that was fun. Storm. Great. So, uh, hey, uh, this is a storm. That uh, You're, like, safe here, right? Because Karanos and all that? Uh, I mean, I, probably I am. <laughs> the rest of you, I hope so. Oh. oh, well, that's that's reassuring. I will switch the uh, the roll twenty over to the Moray map. Awesome. All right. This is fun. All right. Oh, that's I like that. Mm -hmm. Gotta add some turns here. Uh, would would one of you like to? Uh, actually, you know what? We'll just have two true not in this combat. Yeah, she's yeah. below Dex. Sounds yeah. like I, if if, um, if Doros wasn't already her exact domain of magic, I might have said we should use her. But since we have two clerics anyway, we might as well just have us play. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Maybe right. maybe, maybe uh, two true is feeling a little seasick. It went down below deck. Mm -hmm. All right. She does get seasick. Broken Pack never has less than two clerics. <laughs> it's part of the rules. That's right. <laughs> That's why they didn't have any healers. Oh, we dear. Died. <laughs> <laughs> well, our, our, well, we still well, only have one healer. You have two clerics, and one is a healer. <laughs> at, at the beginning of the Broken Pact, we had two clerics, and neither <laughs> of them had any healing ability. True. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you had two clerics and a bard, and the other I bard had that. no healing either. The bard took no healing. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to just use the images that I had saved here. These are not necessarily what they look like, but we do have. It appears as if uh, these all appear around you. 
um, the ghostly shapes, uh, the larger ghostly shapes, um, you can see sort of have lighted eyes and wispy hair and are uh, quite specter-like in nature, whereas the, uh, the smaller beings um, are much more like corpses or ghouls um, of, of uh, sort of the remains of sailors with tattered clothes and gaunt skin and um, uh, dead eyes, as opposed to the light behind the others. Um, does everyone, let's see, Lydia, do you have an initiative? I do. I rolled me a nine. Okay. Astaroth? I got a 14. Okay. Um, my I'm trying to select a thing. Why is it not letting me select a thing? I'm sorry, it's not letting me click. There we go. Uh, these rolled. Come on. These rolled a 19, which was nice. Ooh. And then these roll. Also, is that also a 19? Looks like also a 19. Oh, boy. Oh, dear. Oh I have both of the first two turns. Um, <laughs> so that's fun for me. Top of the round, we will have... Uh, so they will just move towards the boat. Um, these sort of undead beings that have a bit of star stuff look to them, but it seems as if the storm itself is the cause of why they are here um, and bringing them to, to this particular place. And they will all just approach the ship. Um, and I'll move them in a moment. The ghosts, meanwhile, uh, will uh, come up to the ship and they have, uh, they can fly, uh, and so they will move up to. Uh, we'll go to Dura, and we'll go to Sophia, uh, and they will attempt to touch, to reach out and touch. And Dura, uh, oh, these are con saves. I see. Is that right? No, these are plus to hit. Uh, Dura, that is a seven to hit you. And I, that I assume miss. that misses, yeah. And uh, Sephia, that is a 20 to hit you. That does hit. Uh, the damage is 14 necrotic damage. Okay, and I'm resistant, a, so I only take seven of that. So halved, yep. And I need a constitution saving throw. Okay. That is a 16. Okay, that passes. You feel okay. the chill touch that this specter uh, uh, gets to you, and it sucks some of the life out of you, but you're resistant to necrotic damage, and you're able to shrug off the permanent uh, effects. Okay, um, as a reaction, um, yes. my eyes glow suddenly, and I need it to make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, 16. Um... Ah, uh, he just he just passed. He just hit it. My my DC is is sixteen. So, mm. um, he does take half of this though. Okay. Um, so uh, he's gonna take two D eight lightning damage. And so let me go ahead and roll that. Uh, this is a this is a feature of Tempest Clarus called Wrath of the Storm, and it's almost like Hellish Rebuke, but it is a it's a it's a it's a class ability instead of a spell that slots. So, nice. Uh, and so he is gonna take uh. Well, only half of this, and then I don't know how resistant he is or not. But it would have been normally would have been four, so just two lightning damage. All right. Um, however, because I gave him lightning damage, I can also push him ten feet away from me, um, okay. and so that makes me now disengaged from him. And it does look like he may be resistant to lightning. Okay, good so to know. Takes one lightning damage. Okay, good to know. And then, as you do that, you uh, get your wits about you, and it is your turn. 
Okay. Um, I am suddenly going to do something that Lydia has only seen me do once before in Astarok as well. I raise my hands in the air and suddenly uh, my my cool seaweed style cloak transforms into the very Nyx style stars and worlds that we've seen around us as I take on my Nyx form as a Nyx born. Uh, so for the rest of the next minute, uh, I will now be uh, attacks on me will have disadvantage and I believe that's the big thing. Let me just make sure. It was the first time I've used it, so let me make sure. Um, yeah, attacks against me, attack rolls against me have disadvantage for the next minutes. Uh, and so that's fun. And that's my action. And then as my bonus action, I am going to cast a Spiritual Weapon. Um, okay. And I'm just going to do a normal level two for that. And so, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to pop up out of the water. And I think it's going to take the form of kind of a Nyxborn looking, um, it's like a, almost like a dolphin that like kind of like bursts out of the water and it's like made up of stars and shapes and stuff like Ooh. that. And then it's going to like do like a flip in the air and slam its tail down and try to hit that guy uh, with his tail. So let me go ahead and roll that attack. What is the radius on a spiritual weapon or is there a radius? There's not a radius. It's a, it's a, it's a attack. It's a ah, spell attack. It. Great. Yeah, that's why I'm rolling the, the attack. Um, Oh, that is a natural 20. Nice. Uh, my, my, might be my first natural 20 of the campaign. Maybe. Uh, so I'm very excited about that. Um, so now, are we just doing, how are we doing in this game? We just roll the damage dice twice? Um, I'll let you do, I'll let you roll however you see fit, but I think that, um, let's, let's roll the damage dice twice for this, okay. for this combat. Okay, cool. All right. Ooh, great. That is 11 plus 5. That is going to be that's going to be 16 force damage on it. Nice. 16 force damage. Yeah. I don't have resistance to that one though. Good. That's the plan. <laughs> I don't but I wanted to have resistance to. All right, so it takes that damage and it is it is already looking like it's um, its shape is shifting a little bit, uh, and it, it is already quite damaged. Um, cool. And you would like to stay on the edge of the boat there? Uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be ready for some fighting. All right, Astarok. Um, there is, uh, there is a, a, a lot of things around you. It looks like one of the undead has climbed aboard already. The rest are sort of approaching the edges uh, and are on their way up. So um, the the undead seem corporeal and the yes okay so they have like bodies that I could whack and try and so yeah Astrock is going to see one that's just the one that's just kind of crawled up onto the boat I assume up on the the on the front, front left there. there yep and he's going to be like hey nobody gets on our boat uninvited and just uh run up to it and uh a as he runs just kind of unclasp his axe from the back and just come in and I just want to whack him. Great. And then if I do whack him, I'm going to try and knock him off the boat. Vorpal Tails, uh, thanks for the raid. Oh, hey, oh, welcome. Thanks for the raid. Oh, hi, Vorpal Tails. Thank you so much. Okay, so first, I will attack. I got a, uh, I got a 17. Does that hit? 17 does hit. Oh, yeah. Uh, so that's 1d12 plus 6 with my great axe. Um, I rolled a 1, but I get to re-roll it because I get to do that. Yep. Uh, so I got a 5, so that's 11 damage. Okay. And this is on one of the one of the undead. So, yeah, 11 damage. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. And then I will take another attack. It is a 21. So if that doesn't hit, you lied about the last time. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, variable AC, I've decided. Uh, <laughs> uh, and that, oh, whoo, okay, so that does uh, 17 damage. Gee, purse, yeah, so you, that one is no more. Uh, that one no. is pirate bits. That one okay. is chum well, in the water. In that case, can I, uh, like, automatically succeed on my, uh, my uh, hammering horns to knock them five feet back? Absolutely. So I hit him with the, so Astarok whacks him with his axe twice and then just goes bam and like headbutts him and the corpse of the thing just spirals backwards off of the boat. Nice. That's permission next time. Absolutely. Uh, 
And would you like to uh, remain on the on that side, or would you like to move around? No, I think I'm going to stay on the edge there. Yeah. Okay, sounds great, Lydia. It's going to be your turn next. Okay. Oh, how close am I to the nearest one of these guys? It looks like. So there are uh, a couple of the undead looking guys that are on the edges of ships. One of them is about 15 feet from you. The other one's about 30 feet. Um, And 10 feet from you, engaged with Dura presently, is one of these ghostly figures. Okay. um, So I will, um, because I can get, it's like 10 feet. So I can go to the one with Dura, right? Yes. Okay, great. So I am going to, um, I'm going to attack with, um, since I'm dual, I, with my rapier. And, uh, let's see. Oh, no, I need to roll my d20. All right, so I attack with my rapier. I rolled, uh, I got a 12. 12 is its armor class. Oh, sweet. Um, and I... Nice. <clears throat> I actually got a hit in this game, y'all. <laughs> hey! <laughs> uh, and, uh, uh, wait, hold on. That wasn't my damage. I rolled the wrong one. And for my damage, uh, I rolled it to a five for okay. my damage. Plus your sneak attack. Ooh, yes, because you are, uh, Ooh. you are, you have an ally engaged. A, with well, and she's a buckler of swash. So, right, swash buckler. Right, so, so, I, I will you. then, uh, do my sneak attack. Yay! Perfect. Uh, so with the sneak attack, then. My damage, whoa, that's a lot of dice. 13. Okay. Nice. And <laughs> is, your, is your rapier magical? Uh, my rapier? I don't think it is. I okay. don't think it's a so magical you rapier. Swing out with your sword, and it does cut into the visage of this ghost, but it does less damage than you might otherwise think. I slashed something, and I'm just happy because I slashed and then I stabbed. <laughs> Perfect. Good Good. slashing. Thank you. Excellent slashing. Uh, Anything else you'd like to do? Um, Well, because I don't want to do fancy. Well, yeah, I can do fancy footwork since I hit. Um, So I am going to move. I'm going to hide. Okay. Where would you like to hide? Oh, that's there isn't there aren't a lot of places to hide on here, are there? <laughs> um, okay, then maybe I won't hide because there really aren't a lot of places to hide. Um, so I will go. I will move as close to sixty feet away uh, as I can because I know that it's um, we're on a boat. Okay, uh, aft or stern? You think front or back? I think aft. aft I should note right. there is like a little tent structure. At the back, at the at that's the true. Aft. You could so, like, hide in the little yeah. tent. Okay, but I'm hiding in the little tent, uh, like a like a big old coward. Perfect. Go ahead and roll yeah. a stealth check for me. Ooh, okay. Uh, do 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 do. Dura, you're on deck. <laughs> Get it? Because never mind. That's not. It's a boat. Yeah. Eighteen. A boat. It's so stupid. Eighteen. Good to know. So All right, Dura. You are engaged with one of these ghosts right. that uh, Lydia came up and slashed at, and then subsequently ran away from there are a couple of zombies uh that, about four zombies left that look like they're approaching but not quite here that is fine they have lived their life i still have mine i will put them to peace and rest by smashing them across the head <laughs> uh so i take my base it's gonna do a wide swing into this ghostly creature I'd say 21 yeah, to hit. hit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so that is nine points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. But as a life cleric, uh, when I do an attack, I also get to roll a D8 of rage. Excellent. Uh, for eight points of radiant. Okay. Uh, so it looks like the... Uh, you, you saw the rapier... And it didn't have quite the effect that uh, perhaps Lydia expected. And you thought, aha, magical, godly weapon. And imbue your your mace with the power of Keranos. And it, it glows. And the radiant energy smashes into this, uh, this being. And it is no more. It dissipates in see. purple smoke. With you. 
Uh, would you like to do anything else? Um, nah, I'm okay. going to stay there because uh, Lydia ran off and I'm worried that they're going to try to get <laughs> her soul. So That's I'll okay. stay here. Perfect. <laughs> Top of the round, it is going to be the four remaining uh, uh, undeads turns. One of them is is next to your spiritual weapon. Does that matter? Uh, no, because you don't get bonus. You don't get attack opportunities on it. Okay. Uh, they. I mean, it's up to all... you, but usually you don't get it. I don't think. I think. I think rules is written. You don't get it on those. Yeah, I don't think they do. Uh, the one that came in from the back did not see Lydia. Um, and so runs past the tent where Lydia is hiding. Um, and Good instead hide. is going to go uh, at Sophia. So two of the ghouls are going to attack Sophia. Cool. Bring our on. rolls of 23. Disadvantage? Oh, disadvantage. Well, the, if okay, I'll keep these dice, which means that this is a roll of 12. Okay. Yeah, that misses. That misses. And... Seven. Yep. So uh, that one uh, totally misses you. The other one that's attacking you, these are all at disadvantage, yes? Yeah. Okay. Ten does not hit. And <laughs> six does not hit. So all of the slashes of these zombie-like creatures just can't seem to find purchase as your cloak easily uh, um, redirects their claws with uh, with ripples in the fabric yeah um dura you do also have one on you that is that's a 10 to hit and astarok 15 not gonna hit me all right well none of the none of them can hit you with their claws as the sound of scraping on astarok's armor and yeah. and De deflecting off of Safia, Sophia's uh, uh, cloak and all of the, uh, um, uh, the those attacks miss. There is one remaining specter who is going to come up to Sophia since they were already engaged already and attempt to do the life drain attack again. And that's a nine. Not rolling great. So all of the... Oh, this was at disadvantage also. Still a nine. Um, so, uh, yeah. Not just can't mighty. seem to find any purchase anywhere uh, with any of these attacks. Do these um, creepy ghost people. Sophia, it's your turn. Now that I'm being surrounded by all of them, I go to them and I go, now I've got you right where I want you. And I cast Spirit Guardians, which is going to affect them on their turn. Mm. But it's going to go, um, it's going to be uh, a 15 foot radius around me. And Ruben, you'll be able to see this, but it won't show up on the camera because uh, it's not, not coming on Don's sheet. Okay. Uh, but you can see, so everywhere that circle is, anything in that circle of uh, of my choosing, which is basically everybody but Dora and Lydia, uh, mm -hmm. on, the, on the start of their turn, they'll have to make a saving throw. So when it comes back around on them, that'll be what that is. That's a concentration spell, so I'm just going to mark that I am concentrating so I don't forget. Boy, Great. I wish I had a warcaster on this character. I do not, but that's all right. Um, and then uh, with my spiritual weapon that is right there, uh, it's going to attack the same gusty guy that it already attacked. So okay. let's go ahead and make that attack roll. All right. That was not a natural 20 this time, but still pretty good. That's a 24. That hits. All right. So I'll roll my D8. She's scary. Oh, that's <laughs> thank you. I'm very good at what I do. Um, there's a um that was an eight plus, so that would be uh that would be oh it's two d8s actually. Um, which means actually I rolled too low last time, but whatever. Um, no, 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 that was right. Sorry, I'm looking at the higher level spell. Uh, so eight plus five, so that's 13 force damage right down on that. So the dolphin, wow. the dolphin at this point, the dolphin is kind of like doing the thing that dolphins do, like they're dancing up on their tail. And then it kind of <laughs> does like a real quick, like a <laughs> with, with its flippers, like very nice. prestigious style on this thing. Um, and then it goes like, <laughs> and then like, I don't, I can't do a good dolphin impression, but it's, it's very, <laughs> that was pretty good. That was pretty good. good. Yeah, it's very... Yeah, so it's very like flipper flipper. Yeah, like to the left, to the right, squeaky. Yeah, perfect. So, and that That's is exactly point. what Therosi and dolphins sound like. There's yeah, a especially difference. ones that are in Nyx, you know. Yeah, yeah. It actually, it actually sounds like Safia doing an impression of a dolphin because it's her <laughs> weapon. So <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Uh, Astarok. Now it's a horse. You have, 
you have one up on you. Um, so, yep. Uh, I was just going to say, Astarok had been like looking at the one he knocked over the uh, the edge, and the other one came up behind him and started like scrabbling at the back of his armor. And Astarok turns around and goes, "All right, wait your turn. Come on!" And is just going to try and bisect the thing down the middle. I almost just uh, yanked my headphones out doing that, so oh, no. if you can still hear me, everything's great. Okay, good. What? <laughs> Don't mess oh, with me. Oh, no. <laughs> so Astarok will take his attack on uh, this uh, zombie. Uh, that is a 16. Does that hit? 16 hits. Oh, boy. And in that case, I do 15 damage. Okay. And uh, one more attack, because two is better than one. Uh, that's 14. Does that hit? That does hit. Hooray! Then that will do 10 damage. Oof, and that one also crumples as it is cleft in twain yeah, uh, it, right on the deck though, of the ship. Even though mechanically it's two attacks, I like to imagine it was just one clean, like, <laughs> right through the thing. Absolutely. Like in Gladiator when he's cutting the three pieces. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, so you've got some zombie pieces on the... You'll have to clean that up later. Actually, you won't, I've decided, because they're Nyx-born dead people, and so they sort of just turn into purple wisps and float away. Neat. Oh, Lydia. Uh, actually, Astarok, you have movement, if you wish. Uh, Astarok will close the gap between him and the, the one who's, like, right south of him. Right there. Perfect. Uh, Lydia, it is your turn. You okay. are hidden. I am hidden. Um, that means I can run up on one of them, like all sneaky, right? Sure. So I am going to, uh, there is, it looks like um, going forward from where I'm at, there's there's one like right over here, kind of diagonal from uh, mm -hmm. Sophia. Yep. So I am going to uh, do my sneakiness and run up on them. And then I am going to attack with my rapier. Great. And since you were hidden and they didn't see you, I'm going to go ahead and give you advantage on this roll. Ooh. Natural 20. Woo! Yes! yes. Yeah, yeah, oh, my yeah, dice yeah. Were working. I switched my dice out. <laughs> this is Lydia really Day. Yeah, you get sneak attack on this, too, so that's going to be a sure lot. Of, you're going to mess up this thing. Yeah, so double all of the dice that you have to roll here. Oh, geez. Okay. Uh, so my damage. Rogue's, Rogue's pretty good when they get the, to double all the dice. Okay, so that's not, 16, not 16 for my damage. Total? Uh, for the two, for just the rapier, and now I'm going to do my sneak attack. Okay. Nice. 16 and is going to be reduced to eight. Be, or no, Sorry, no, not on this guy. This guy's this guy's just made of meat. This guy's fine. Yes, 16 <laughs> damage. <laughs> and then for my sneak attack, you said double it? Double the dice. Because uh, I've got 17 before I double it. Uh-huh. Uh, so, so roll the dice again. So roll a second set, roll the dice twice is what you do. Yeah. Perfect. And so 17 plus 18. Oh yeah. <laughs> like a 35 yeah. or something. Yeah. That's a lot of damage <laughs> on a ghoul. Um, yeah, that thing's cat food at this point. Uh, just totally messed Lydia's up world, we're just living on in. the bridge of the ship. I knew I needed to switch them dice out. Perfect. Now, now we know what the problem has been this whole time. <laughs> you weren't in dice. <laughs> cursed, cursed dice. Uh, you, just, you just needed to have uh, Thassa tell you that she liked your art, and now you're rolling like a charm. That's what we're uh, <laughs> Floating on air, my friends. I'm just floating on believe. air. That's all you need. Uh, Dura. I'm looking around, seeing this party eliminate all of these enemies these ghouls these monsters and previously they seemed ridiculous <laughs> but the efficiency for which they have executed this is startling like it's even even like lydia who was like <laughs> just come out of nowhere and then eviscerates that thing and dora's kind of Okay, <laughs> it's just gonna sacred flame the one in front. Uh, so they need okay. to make a, uh, I think it's dexterity saving throw. Yep, dexterity saving throw of uh, 13. Uh, 16, 13 on the dice plus two. 
for the this was at one of the Googles, uh, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So they, it it makes the save, and it's probably because he's not aiming properly because he's a little like startled, but now strangely reassured. I think. <laughs> nice. <sighs> oh, we got this. Uh, anything okay. else? Uh, no, no. Kind of just marveling at uh. The A team. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Top of the round. Um, it's my uh, NPC's turns, and boy, howdy, they are all in the spiritual guardians. Range. Sure are. So what they suddenly see happen is is these like spectral crabs appear out of out of the area around them and start pinching at them, and they need to make dex. They all need to make dexterity saving throws. Oh, sorry, okay. wisdom saving throws. Wisdom, wisdom saving saves. Throws. Okay. Uh, ooh, those, I'm starting to see a pattern those of crabs. <laughs> I have a friend. He's he's very powerful. Uh, one of them rolled a nine. One of them rolled a sixteen. Did the ghouls? Okay. The the nine failed. The sixteen passed. Okay. Um, and then let me know how the the ghosty guy did. Oh, I can roll for the ghosty. Oh guy. no, sorry, it's not his turn. Never mind. No, I can. Natural I can. twenty for the ghosty okay. guy. Okay, that's fine. Um, okay, so let's go ahead. I'm just gonna roll on D and D Beyond because it's faster. Sounds um, great. Oh okay. my God. Um, well, that's not accurate. That's like the thing where. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Um, so it does 17 radiant damage. So the one who's past it will do half of that. And on the next turn, the other guy will do half of that as well because they get the natural 20. Half so. of 17 is eight. And that's radiant damage. So that affects yes. their their levels of it. I don't know. But. Yeah. Unfortunately, they don't have resistance to radiant damage. Unfortunately, oh, I'd hope, not. I'd hope the undead creatures wouldn't have resistance. Yeah. I was hoping they had both. Right. Otherwise, like, why have resistance? <laughs> this is a tough, this is a tough fight. They, yeah. I mean, the specter has a lot of resistances, but that's not one of them. Yeah. Um. So the ghouls, uh, the ghoul. Well, one ghoul is going to attack uh, Astarok, and the other one's going to attack Sophia. Astarok, uh, sixteen to hit you. No. And Sophia, I'm rolling at disadvantage. Yeah, you are. Uh ooh, 17. That does hit. Nice. Um, Finally got then... a hit. Hey, you've already hit me once. <laughs> well, that's true. Uh well, it's been a minute. I've I, I just I just like rolling damage. Um I need a DC 10 constitution saving throw. Okay. And you're also gonna take five slashing damage. Uh, the con was uh, I rolled a ten plus two to twelve, so okay. the five slashing damage, and I'll go ahead and wrath of the storm the guy who just hit me. Okay, so that's going to be a dexterity saving throw. Uh, nope. Okay. Eight. Two d eight. Let's see what happens to that guy. Jeepers. Okay. Ooh, thirteen on the dice. That's thirteen lightning damage on the guy who just attacked me. Yeah, that guy is super dead. Yeah. He um, is. Yeah, he's he the is. queen. You best not miss. That's I mean, I guess right. you didn't well, miss. Flashes, Maybe you should and... miss because if you miss, you don't get lightning. But if you hit me, you get <laughs> right? lightning. So, so previously, when don't missing, come the queen is what I'm saying. There weren't any sparks. There weren't wasn't any effect. Finally, finds purchase and gets a slash in. But where the slash occurs, the the energy uh, explodes into this the face of this undead and sort of like Raiders of the Lost Ark just sort of melts in place in front of you. Um, let me also get a um, uh, concentration check for you, for me. I thought that's why, that's why I rolled the concentration. No, the other one was for to see if you got paralyzed. Oh, okay. Cool. So this will still be DC 10. Okay, well, I, I, got, I rolled a 10. I rolled an A plus 2, so. Fabulous. So you maintain concentration. Gotta get that, I got to get that Warcaster feat somewhere. Next time I level up, go. I, got my, I might have to snag that because that is real valuable. <laughs> uh, and then the last remaining uh, ghost took that damage it's not looking great it is going to attempt to reach out and touch you again with uh, its life drain 11 to hit you misses darn it well that's that's the end is of that even time. with this disadvantage or is that just that was out? with yeah. disadvantage yeah yeah you don't need to roll again if it misses so right. yeah <laughs> um, no that was cool. with yeah i rolled that one yeah. seven on one of the dice yeah uh cool. and it's sophia's turn sophia okay. so that dolphin oh, that dolphin is like real mad that you mess mm. with me. And so that dolphin is going to turn around and be like, what's up? And then it's going to, it's going to do another flip in the water and come down on it with its tail. Uh, so let's see how that rolls. Okay. That is going to be, that might not be as good. That's a 17. 17 that hits. 
Okay, cool. So the 17 does that. Yeah. So that's going to be a D8 plus 5. That's going to be... That is going to be 11 force damage coming down on the little wind, windy guy. How's that looking for him? On the specter? The specter, as the uh, dolphin body slams, uh, goes <laughs> and is no more. All right. And then for my action, now that I'm no longer in kind of oh, this guy, I'm going to turn and look at the one that is facing Astarok and... Uh, and 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 Dula was it Dula? Um, Dura. I'm Dura. Um, yeah, Dula is a very different thing. <laughs> um, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask Dula to help us birth the death of this creature, and uh, I am going to cast. Um, oh, never mind. I don't have Radiant Flame on this character. Never mind. Uh, instead, I am gonna cast Guiding Bolt on that character. Um, which is going to be radiant damage to that effect. So I'll do it. Let's do it at level one. I think he looked, how, how's he looking? How, for I should ask. That one that is, looking? I mean, that one's been hit once. Um, you know, these things are meat sacks. They look bad to begin with. Okay. Right? Actually with the level. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to do a guiding bolt level one. Um, you know, we're all friends here. I mean, he's not my friend, but you know what I mean? Um, okay. Um, that is going to be, you said a 12 hits, right? Yes. I, I rolled a 12. I rolled perfect. Four plus eight. So that's it. good. Um, great. So let's go. I'll get, again, I'm just going to roll the dice right here. And that's 14 radiant damage on him. That is how many hit points that it had left. Yeah. So Woo! describe for me the final stand of the final ghoul aboard your ship. I think that, I think that like that thing, the, everyone came at me. They all missed. They all tried their thing. That one, that one got me. And I was like real annoyed by it. Um, and it's very much like, that dolphin came down and I, I turned around and, and very much like a particular shade of which recently I turn around, I see this one between my two friends and I just go, no. And I put my hand out to it. And then like I blasted it with my staff and a guiding bolt comes firing out of my staff that the bolt looks like almost like a wave of, of like it's water, but it's like a spectral water comes out of my, out of my staff and it like washes it. And as it washes over it, it just like fades into oblivion. Perfect. And I go, and get as, off my ship. And a beautiful sound of the tide washes over. And then there's the quiet of the ocean. But on the ocean breeze, you do hear the voice of Vampire 54, who says, do you know the way to San Jose's? I hear there's a mighty storm lord to fetch. Thank you for the toast. Thank you. Vampire Thank you. Your ship is now clear of villains. And you are uh, able to clear this necromancy fueled storm um, as you make your way past that storm front. On the horizon, you see a weird sight. You see a darkened sky that looks like the underside of a bowl. And as you approach, you do see a large figure holding it up. You have some time before you arrive at the bearer of the heavens, if you wish to chat. Okay. Did anybody else but me take any damage from that? Are you all okay? Are you, are you hurt? Anyone hurt? Um, I think I'm fine. Feeling good over here. Okay. New friend. Are you good? You get ship shape. I am good, thank you. But if cool. if anyone is going to do healing, let let me heal you. Great, I, I would I would take you. that. I would take that welcome lately. I'd be happy for it. Uh, thank you, my. Thank you. Uh, I'm gonna do a second level cure wounds just just in case. Uh, so you get back twelve points. Yeah, that was exactly what I was down. So that was perfect. Nice. Yeah. Hey. Oh, thank oh, you. Yes, yes. Oh my gosh, it's so nice to have somebody else here who knows what knows what they're doing with some healing. I, I mean, Tutor is good at it. You all are much, much more powerful than I expected. If I am being sincere. Oh well, I mean, I appreciate the compliment, but I just kind of most of the time I've just sort of stumbled through things, and it turns out being good at hitting stuff with axes is a pretty relevant skill almost all the time. <laughs> Were you not worried or fearful of those creatures? I mean, if if I'm being honest, they freaked me out a bit, but I don't know. All this weird stuff that's happened over the last uh, long time, I, I'm just so freaked out by everything so often that it all kind of blends together, and 
I just sort of let it roll over me. I kind of find that like sometimes you you can be scared and like being scared is just like a thing that happens, but that doesn't mean you don't do stuff. You know, like like right now, like there's a lot on the balance. And so it's like, yeah, I'm scared. Like, oh, there's like zombies and ghosts and like windy guys, but just got to deal with it. Otherwise, I can get on my boat. So, yeah, I killed them. I like to hit stuff. <laughs> Look at it. Here, here. I, I did not know you, 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 Lydia. I, you confuse me the most, to be honest. You, you're very <laughs> t- timid and friendly. But when you came out of seemingly nowhere, stabbed the creature, disappeared again, and you you keep doing that. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm really good at stabbing. Hey, you, you, at you weren't that bad with that mace yourself. I mean, that thing, oh. it, it looked peaceful somehow. I don't know how to describe it, but there was a, a peaceful vibe when you were swinging it. But then it, it wrecked that guy. Thank you. I I do my best to pacify. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, you did a pretty darn good job. That guy was mm. mince me. Mm. Yeah, everyone yep. did a good. Everyone, everyone did a great job killing. I uh, I see at least a little bit why <laughs> you would have earned an audience. You are bold, uh, a bit chaos, but Karanos, he does like that. I got to see lightning powers. Today was a good day. Oh, now we have to hold up the world. Yeah, hey, speaking of which, what do you know about this world holding up guy? I mean, is he a friend of yours? Or you just know your god or what? I He does know my god, but I don't have much relation. I, I don't know if it's literal, if it's more of a metaphor in some ways. I, I could just be a burden to hold up the world and be stuck there. So a- Astarok um, looks yeah. over at the the dome that's going there. Mm-hmm. I, I don't understand. How could that be the world? I, I, is that the entire Theros above it? I mean, there is more than one world, Astarok. Yeah, you're telling me. Yes. I am. <laughs> oh, so, all right. Don't tell your God, but I'm from like a different world, and I keep getting like pinballed around to these different places because I got this tattoo. What if, what if he is holding up the world you are from? Yo, that's a really interesting thought. I mean, if he dropped it, that would be. That would be terrible. Well, that I, responsibility will be yours for 30 days. Ah, oh, gee. All right. Well, no pressure. No, no, no. That I mean, no pressure or anything. I was that uh, just, just, it was. I mean, it's going to be some pressure uh, from the weight of the world. Just yeah, pressure. That's true. It's probably a lot, actually. Uh, yeah, I got really well, excited. Just, you said no pressure. I, I no pressure unless. Pressure by weight and gravity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, Kerenos, why am I here? Why did you do this? <laughs> Hello, sailors. Are you here to have a visit? And you see the giant uh, holding up the world turns and faces you. Um, looks like this giant is made of cooling magma. Um wears a uh, a loincloth and holds up the world on its shoulders. Um hi. Uh nice to meet you. I'm Lydia. Uh these are these are my friends. Uh this is Sophia, this is Astarok, and this is Dura. Uh and hi. we're here to uh hold the world for you. We we heard you needed a little bit of a break and you just kind of want to hang out. So, uh, and it must get really lonely just hanging out here all day, you know, by yourself holding up worlds. So we thought that we might be able to come and like take that from you for a couple days. Are you a figment of my imagination? 
I don't think so. Am I a figment of his imagination? Whoa, weird. Not that I know of, but if, if you're one, I am too. So I don't know how much of an authority I can be on that subject. I've I've known them for an hour. It's possible. You say that you are here to... I've held up the world for hundreds of years. Why would I allow you to do it? Karanos wants to talk to you. Oh. It's, it's just a temporary thing. Just three days. Okay. I can do that. Um, who? So you want to... Who wants to come take the world? So how do we do that exactly? Because I don't know if you noticed, but we're not giants, and you are a giant. Well, like, this I guy's have... pretty big. He's real big, but I don't think he's giant big. You're, are you giant sure. big? Uh, he is. He is fifteen feet tall ish. Um, the size of the person holding the world uh, is secondary to the strength that they have inside. Oh, strength inside. And oh. out. You need actual strength to hold ah. up as well. But, which I can help with. I have a belt that I can let you borrow. Um, and he uh, nods to a belt. And he says, just give me just one moment as I... Hold on. I need to figure out how to... This stupid belt loops. Are... Okay, here you go. Take this. Who's going to take the... Who's going to take this? Well, I mean, look. My job in this group is to be the strong guy most of the time. So, uh, if you need strong guy shit done, I guess I'm your man. Hey, can I apologize ahead of time if I, like, drop the world on everybody? It would be very bad if you were to drop the world. I, <laughs> kind of like we're here, Astok, is to not drop the world. I'm going to try not to, but I don't know. I'm, I'm getting really heavy vibes from that thing. The world is heavy for all of us. Does he have to do it no. himself? You may help. You may change hands. You may, if it's only for three days, you may do however you see fit. But you must hold it. All right. You Chizuru, know what? Doesn't Chizuru, didn't she say she has a belt of giant strength? No. Oh. Okay, it's fine. I don't know. I, I, I must. I must have missed her. That's fine. Tutor is down below decks, just like sleeping. <laughs> leave me. Uh, leave me out of this. <laughs> Uh, so you're going to take a belt? <laughs> okay. I'll take the first hold. Okay. Uh, he hands you a belt of stone giant strength. Oh. Sets your strength score to 23. Um, and he says, all right, well, I will see you in three days. Um, good luck to you. Oh, my name is Al, by the way. Al Sionis. Um, nice to meet you all. Um, please don't drop it. All right. I sure hope this isn't one of those parables where, like, you know, you don't come back and, and we're fools for holding the world up. Hmm. I think he's given an idea. Maybe it is. <laughs> maybe, maybe. And he's like, wanders off and is like chatting to himself. Is that a metaphor? I don't know what that word means. Um, Astarok, if you attune to the belt, you may uh, use it, uh, and this will be the first check that I'm going to okay. ask for. Here's what, here's what I need rolled. First of all, you're at C, so I need a D20 rolled to see if anything comes and attacks you, or if a storm rolls by. All right. I rolled a 14. Uh, to, okay, so there's no incidents that occur while you're holding up the world. Astarok. What does the world mean to you? What is the world to Astarok? Oh, it is a metaphor. Oh, that's always a metaphor. Astarok thinks about the world and, and kind of his, his, especially recently, like kind of rolling with the punches, kind of going through thing and, and kind of considers for a while, like, like why he isn't as afraid of things as he used to be. Why he, he jumps into these new situations when he was sort of just, like, for the longest point in his life, he really lived most of his life in just a couple blocks of Ravnica, like, around 10th Street and the area that he was raised in. And he kind of thinks about how, for him, after the dark place that he went as as a pit fighter, as, like, a, a pretty severe alcoholic, 
And uh, as someone who, you know, ended up killing people without even remembering doing it, and, and just the second lease on life he was given by the Boros Legion. And kind of just thinks about the fact that because he wasted his life at first, like the world he has now is gravy. Like everything he's got now is, is a plus. And it seems like there is a plan for him to roll through and try and, you know, go through hell and, and try and save Theros and God's damn it. If that's what he's got to do, that's what he's got to do. So the world has a, has given him another chance. I guess he can hold it for a little while. That's great. Um, go ahead and roll the strength check with your strength score of 23. Which is a modifier of what? Uh, should be plus four. Right? Uh, see, 23 should be higher than that. It could be more than that. No, I have 20 that. and that's five. 15, yeah. Yeah. Uh, seven. Seven. Right? Yeah. Seven. Yeah. Because you go up every even number. So. Yeah. yeah. I was counting from 15 for some reason. Oh. Uh, hmm. All right. Well. That's a nine. Well, you have help. Keep in mind because the other the other folks around you are here and giving you emotional and physical support in some cases. So okay. go ahead and roll with advantage. Okay, I'll take the advantage. Uh, so that is uh, what did we determine the plus was? It was it's seven. A it's, it's a plus. I just looked it up. It's a plus six because um, I just looked up the. I, I added the item to my inventory and attuned to it hmm. to see what it do, and it made it a plus six. Okay, uh, in that case, I am uh, that I rolled a twenty-one. Excellent. Um, you successfully are able to hold the world for a full day, but it is exhausting, and you suffer a point of exhaustion. <sighs> we're the Boros. We're okay. He just goes and like kind of like <laughs> sings that chanting song after a while. <laughs> um. It's going to be day two. You can pass the world to someone else and give them the belt, or you can do it yourself with the point of exhaustion. All right. Anyone want to take this off my hands for a bit? Um, one, mm. I, I probably could, or Lydia could, or, or yeah. my friend could. Do you... I can keep holding it. I, I got this if you need it. Um, I believe in me. I think I can hold a world. What well, what's well, so hard? Well, you go like this. It's holding the world. Uh, so I go up uh, and I take over the belt in the world. Great. Hey, here. Yeah. This helps me get through things. It doesn't have any significance to you, but maybe the fact that it has some to me can help. And I'll pop off my Boros signet, signet for a moment and kind of pin it on Lydia. Ooh, I got jewelry. Tight. And I'm going to go up to Lydia and I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to put my hand on her and I'm going to say, uh, Thassa believes in you and she loves your art. And I'm going to cast guidance on you so that you can have a little bit more like inspiration for your, so you get to roll, you get to add a D4 to your check. Oh, sweet. So with the belt and with the, so it's a, a plus 10. Mm -hmm. uh, so D4. So it'd be plus six oh, and then roll a D4 on yeah, top sorry. of it. Sorry. But before you roll Mr. that, Lydia, mm -hmm. what does the world mean to you? What is the world to Lydia? Um, the world to Lydia is um, filled with all of her friends and the adventures that she's had. Lydia, you know, um, always grew up feeling like she was special. Uh, maybe uh, may, felt like she was a little too special because she is not very good at a lot of the basic things. Um, <laughs> but uh, to her, the world is traveling around the world, worshiping Thassa in many uh, great and then very inappropriate ways. And right now, the world to her is the more and uh, getting to hang out with Sophia and go around and have adventures and, you know, 
get into bar fights and then make friends with the people you got into bar fights with and then get into another fight with them and have to skadoots out of town real quick. <laughs> um, so that's kind of the world to her is being an adventurer and now getting to be one of the heroes of legend who gets to do things like go and hold up a not meta metaphorical, but in fact, very physical and kind of ouchy on her shoulders world. Nice. Uh, go ahead and roll the strength check for me with the d4 for guidance and somebody else roll for me a d20 to see what the c looks like today Ooh. so that's a 22 so then 28 16, 16 you're you're clear smooth also, sailing lesser restoration on Astarok to undo his exhaustion excellent Ooh. so it with is. everything all done it's a 32 wow <laughs> right yeah <laughs> You've got the weight of the world on your shoulders, but it might as well not even be there. And you, uh, com exactly. And um, a an unburdened heart leads to an easy day uh, for Lydia. And you are able to uh, complete your, your, uh, your branch without suffering exhaustion, since you got above a 30. Um, and the seas are beautiful. These are the mystic seas, of course. They're similar to the seas that you're used to uh, in, in, the, um, in the material plane. Are you saying they're like, like the rivers and the lakes that we're used to? Stick to the rivers and lakes that you're used to. Mm -hmm. um, they are beautiful, though. And instead of only having sea life swimming through them, and you do see Nyx-born dolphins and schools of fish and sea turtles and, and pleosaurs and things like that. But you also see tromping across the surface. Um, thank you for the raid, Level 1 Geek. Much appreciated. Hey, you welcome. Thank you for the raid. See, uh, rams. Uh, like a, like a, a flock of sheep tromping across the top of the waves in, in a flock. You see... Um, uh, sort of a goat-headed, eagle-winged lion thing flying in the distance. Um, just very odd, dream-like uh, entities so, you know, traveling around you, not really stopping uh, at your at your doorstep. Uh, you have one more day, uh, Lydia. If you wish to keep the belt, you may. Um, well. Because I know that we're all so adventurous, I'm going to offer. Uh, does anybody else want to get in on this? Because we're definitely telling literally everyone we know that we did this as soon as we're done. And, you know, it, the, yeah, there we go. I knew it. I knew you'd want to get up on this. <laughs> uh, and then so we switch. Okay. Great. So yeah. Prepare for on. some introspection because it gets pretty deep. That's Intro right. What? I don't think I, I don't think I could have done this either. I think this was the trial of all of you. I am, I think I am your witness, so to I speak. I hope you can get notes. Uh, well, tell you what. Yes. If we finish this some other time, come back here and just for laughs, try and carry the world for a while because it really gives you some time to think about what everything means to you. And honestly, I think it was a pretty positive experience overall. I mean, my arms hurt for a while, but it's a cool story. And uh, I don't know. I'm glad I did it. Yeah, ten, ten, no notes. I like it. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm just limbering up. I might actually do that. This seems seems kind of amazing, right? actually. Yeah. Hey, and with with those, I mean, with, with your physique, I, I think you'll be able to hold it, no problem. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I'm going to do it right now. Is that okay? Yes. Um, okay. Safia, uh, you're going to roll with your plus six, of course. Okay. Uh, someone else roll a d20 for me to see what the C looks like. I'll do that. I, I say, I'm not doing it. I'm, I'm the only one who caught <laughs> things that popped up. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled an 18. Ooh, okay. Sorry. Uh, well, Safia, what did you do? <laughs> Same roll. I rolled a one. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Okay. That's a, that's a that's a seven. All right, here's what now I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask. Uh 
was that with advantage? Oh yeah, you're... or did literally just no one oh, help a... Sophia? Oh. No, no, no. You can yeah, roll with advantage. Yeah, nobody helped me. They were all talking about how strong you are. That's true. <laughs> go ahead and roll. Go ahead and roll with advantage. We're all having a conversation. You're good. You're good. <laughs> You know, you know what it is? It's like in Guardians of the Galaxy where like Groot just walks off to grab the thing only, mm-hmm. <laughs> only does not do it. We're, okay. we're having this conversation right. about introspection in the background. You're like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> with, with the advantage, I rolled an 18 plus 6, so 24. Oh, okay. <laughs> I rolled a Jack Bauer on this thing because, oh my gosh. <laughs> Towards the end of Sophia's ship uh, shift. Oh, actually, first of all, Sophia, mm-hmm. what does the world mean to you? What is the world to Sophia? So I think Sophia has a similar view of the world as Lydia about like adventuring and seeing the world. But I think for Sophia, it comes down more to family and like the weight of legacy and the importance of tr- like family traditions and legends, especially like knowing now that that Caliphate isn't just someone whose story her family has told for generations, but is actually family herself. And like a a, um, symbol that is being passed down from generation to generation. So I think that the world of that is the weight that is upon her now is the pressure and the, the, the light of destiny right that is like the the idea of having to take on this mantle but on top of that also is her own children who are adults themselves and are the next generation of her family and and did she raise them with enough dedication to the family like history and legacy as well and also did she put that on them in a way that they don't want did she did she push that on them too much to where they don't feel like they have any agency over it and so that is a lot of of what's happening with her i think about like the the fact that despite being assigned to male at birth she was she was seen as female by fasa and given the gifts of the family anyway and and like able to hold on to that so that's like really important to her because it means like it's like the gift of her family still saw her for who she was and so all of that is what's going on in her head and so i think that like the world for her is probably like the story of Caliphate's adventures but also the story of her family sharing that story for generations and being sung throughout Theros and then like what that means to her what that means to her children and forward. excellent and that is a lot that's a heavy weight as is the weight of the world on your shoulders and you do suffer a point of exhaustion mm-hmm. and towards the end of your time uh, holding up the world uh, something on the horizon takes an interest in what's uh, going on over there as uh, you see a uh, a Drake like being fly towards you, and it just sort of circles, and it says, "Um, you are not Al. He's a Drake. <laughs> um, okay, break back. Yeah." Interesting. He'll probably be um, back tomorrow. We could take a message for you. Those of you that have seen dragons before note that this is a blue dragon. Um, probably a young dragon. one based on its size. It's not terribly large. Uh, maybe about a 15, 10 foot wingspan or so. And it circles around. It says he's on break just to, and he'll be back like tomorrow. I hope so. Cause this is heavy. We made a deal. Three days. Should be tomorrow. And he'll be back to take the burden back off our shoulders. Mm-hmm. Very Good unusual. Deal. Make a persuasion check. At advantage, because you're all sort of working together, whoever wishes to. Maybe someone who's not me. My persuasion is not good. <laughs> mine's, mine's decent. I'll go ahead and do that. Okay. It's like the grand I rolled a 15. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So he'll be back tomorrow. You, this is a favor that you're doing for for him. It's more for Karanos. We're doing it for the for for Karanos, and he's just kind of like oh. getting a free day off because of it. 
and oh, God, you know, it's like it's like what really gets you is the cramp in the in your elbow as you're doing it. It's like that you think it's the weight, but it really is just like the way that it strains. You keep moving that you're gonna find that spot, and you just don't. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, uh, that's weird. Uh, good luck. Thanks. Bye. And it's not going to attack you. Hi. <laughs> oh, so it was nice meeting you. That would have that would have yeah, felt okay. like many you, interactions you, you I've people. had. Just like <laughs> that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's just like I can't be bothered with this today. I just whatever. <laughs> like this might as well happen. Um, and the wow, dragon was, flies off. That hit home. <laughs> <laughs> um, he seemed like you, a nice guy. You see in the distance, Al is returning. Oh. Thank, thank he's God. walking board, f towards you and he's sort of doing his stretches and he goes, well, that was an interesting meeting. How are you all doing? Uh, oh, hey, Sophia, a, a I, dragon I, came by. He said he would check back with you. Oh, Cornelius. Oh. Yes, he stops by every once in a while to sort of mess with me. Um, oh, so good to know he'll be back he's tomorrow to be, a, to be a jerk as well. Yeah, seems a little um, He's he's a bit rude, but you know, blue blue dragons. Hey, do you want your world what, back? Are you going? Oh yes, sorry Thanks, about that. Me. Let me take that off of your hands, and his giant hands will take it. And as it changes <sighs> hands, it fits his size, right? Like when the one ring changes hand, it sort of goes yeah. to a different size, and he places it on his shoulders, and he says, Here's "Well, belt." I'll, I'll just try to. Okay. Oh, I will. T yes, thank you so much for the the belt. I mean, uh, this is sort of awkward to try to put back on. Yeah, I was wondering. I have a bit of a, a thing on my back, and uh, it turns out that is some of uh, what uh, is happening to the uh, to the fraying at the edges of the world. Oh uh, well. <clears throat> Does it itch? Do you want us to scratch it? Or it is it's not so much that it is itches as it is not there. It does not even feel like you ever have a leg fall asleep? Yeah. Sort of like that, except for it's f permanent ish. It's like I have a phantom limb shoulder blade. Oh, so it's weird. You are going to fix this though. That's the plan. Mm -hmm. Did you show it to Keranos? I did. Keranos. Well, he'll tell you. Anyway, it was very nice meeting you. Thank you for holding this up. Good luck uh, hey. on your on your mission. Yeah. Yes. Holding up that world. You know, there was more to it than just being strong. So I'm wondering, what, what does the world mean to you mm. to spend an eon carrying it? <sighs> the world is... A weird place. It is not even real to me. The material plane, I should say. It is temporary, fluctuating. It's wildly changeable. It is like a dream, and so I treat it like a dream. I assume that you are real because you are here and you held it up. But the rest of the people that are maybe out there... I don't, I don't know do you, who they are. Do you get way lonely out here? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's very, they, I go years sometimes without seeing someone. I like seeing Cornelius because it reminds me that there are other beings. I like to watch the fish and the rams. And every once in a while, a god will go by overhead or a shooting star. But the other thing is that this is what I was made for. I am a man with purpose. Other beings of my type aren't so lucky. They may be I may be driven mad by isolation, but I have a there is meaning to my life, and that is to hold this. Mm. And that is good. That is nice. It is good to have purpose. And it seems as if you have purpose. And that is good. Yeah. So maybe, like, you know, after we're done saving the world or whatever, we can come back and visit sometime so you're not so lonely. And that I, would be I can, nice. I would like I that say, a lot. I can say hi sometimes. So I'll, if you want me to say hi sometimes, I will. Can you? 
Yeah, I can't always do it if I'm like tired and like I've used like all my magic for the day. But if I'm like going to bed and I haven't and I got some like leftover magic to spare, I'll be like, what's up, Al? It's Sophia. That is very nice of you to do. I would appreciate that very much. Anyway, good luck on your adventures. Thank you for helping with this and um, say hi to Keranos for me. Hey, good luck yourself. It's a hell of a word, world you're holding up. I do my best, and I'm glad that you did as well. Yeah, we you... all tried. It went pretty well. Yeah. And you can sail off back towards the volcanic island of Keranos, leaving Alconius behind you. It's another day's travel back. Go ahead and roll another d20 for me. I'll do it. Though. Wait, Lydia, do it. Okay, I got these new. Let's see what. Let's see what we're doing. Nope, it's a three. Okay, low is good. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, uh, for avoiding things. Smooth sailing uh -huh. on the way back. Um, you have a day to discuss and recover from exhaustion, uh, Sophia. Um, if there's anything you want to do before you arrive, you may do so. Otherwise. Um, I do have something I want to do. Let me look it up. I, 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 it's been a while since I've played, so I what, forget character names. Um, I'm sorry. Sorry, I thought. I'm mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, I, I'm looking up character names because it's been a while since I've played. So I'm sure. Gonna be, gonna up. Um, I am going to use sending to send a message to my oldest child, uh, Solia, because I haven't contacted them in a while. Yes. And they're on my mind now because of what just happened with the 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 world holding and stuff like that. Um, and Celia lives on this plane of existence, correct? Uh, no, they live in the Siren Sea. Oh, they live their, in the Siren Sea. Other mother, yeah. Ah, um, understood. Uh, yeah, essentially they live with like basically what would be like Cersei, sort of, but not. Uh, their their mother's name is Alestra, um, but um, yeah, or Alestra. Mm -hmm. um, so. Um, Hey, Celia, it's your mom. Well, this one. Um, it's been a while thinking of you. Hope you're well. Oh, I'm in Nyx. Cool. <laughs> uh, before they respond, uh, they thank Sonny Seely for the raid. Thank you, Sonny. Hey. Hey, Rachel. Yeah, hey, Rachel. Sun is right. uh, oh, hey, Mom. Um, things are fine. Things are good. You're in Nyx. That's weird. But glad you're having a safe time. Mom, other mom, is... Out of words. Concern... <laughs> Am I out of words? <laughs> All right. Is concern is the last word okay. you hear. Uh, I have it. I have more spell slots, so I'm sorry, everybody else, for indulging. Uh, but uh, I'm going to turn back and go. Um, why? Why is Alistair concerned? Why is Alistair concerned? Are you okay? Is she okay? What's going? What's going on? We're fine, but mom thinks, other mom, Thassa has something upsetting them. I don't, I don't see it, but it's fine. I'm safe. Good to hear from you. Love you. Okay. I'll use my last of that spell slot to, to send one last message and say, actually saw FASTA last week, um, but I'll look into it. Love you. We'll probably swing by sometime soon if I can. That would be nice. I hope you didn't piss her off. That would not be nice. Love you. Stay safe. See you soon. And I don't respond. Great. 
Um, and while this is happening, just to pass the time, uh, Lydia has started uh, drawing on the boat. <laughs> um, and in this one, it is all of us holding the world up um, with three, with, with all of our different uh, uh, faces. And uh, we've got uh, Dura in there uh, watching and everything is appropriate and everyone's wearing clothes and nothing is weird. Mm -hmm. um, we all look incredibly strong and it is not, uh, it's you not my usual art You can't style. bluff me, Danielle. You can't bluff me. <laughs> it's my usual art style, uh, not my usual art style. Yeah, you, uh, you having to clarify that. <laughs> <laughs> uh is great so uh now we have uh forever on the boat us holding the world in our hands very nice excellent uh you arrive back at the uh the temple um which dura you know as the temple of epiphany um is what it's called uh with the rest of you it's karanos's island mm -hmm. and you're able to park the boat and walk back up the stairs to the sat to the cacophonous sounds of things being created and imagined and reimagined and taken down and storms and crashing and all of the sound of inspiration and creativity. You walk back up and are able to walk back into uh, the temple. Um, and uh, sitting on the stone throne is a great giant purple horned owl uh, that is that shifts and changes into the shape uh, that you are familiar of of Karanos and sits back on the throne in front of you. So you've come back and in one piece. Color me impressed. Yeah, well, you know what you said. Fates and all that jazz. <clears throat> and... We, we learned a little How bit. How did it life. feel? Daunting? Heavy? A lot? Yeah, it made me think about things. Hmm. I really struggled a little bit, and then I kind of righted myself. But there was a moment there where it was real sketchy. Yeah, you all said that um, you truly wanted to save Theros, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now I would say you truly know what it is to have a burden. If you are going to save Theros, you have felt the weight of the world on your shoulders. Do you still believe you can do it? Even after three days? I yeah. think we have to try or who else? You know what I think we learned? Three days a lot. It would have been really tough to be able to hold that thing up for three days, but with some good people holding it up for one day each, wasn't that bad? I think we got some good you people. You rely on each other. <laughs> interesting. I had doubts. You were interesting, but interesting isn't enough. Not in this world. Not in most. You're <laughs> well, seeing through the eyes of my child here. You are brave. You are clever. You act rather than wait. I enjoy that. Like lightning, you strike and strike again. But I do have warnings for you. I am not unkind. I just require proof is all. I am probably uh, one of the easiest to convince. I wanted you to convince me through action, through acknowledgement. And so you've done that today. Now, earlier you asked me, you mentioned 
Thassa. I don't think she will like your plan. We, we've had some interaction with Thassa. I, it's like the first god we met here. And she seemed friendly. Friendly does not mean supportive. She can adore you as children, appreciate your gumption, your curiosity, the drive. But if a parent sees the child do something they think is foolish, does not mean they will be happy. Do you know about Abidant? I do. No. No, I don't. What do you know? And he looks at you. You know who I'm talking about. It was, it was <laughs> stolen by someone from another space, not unlike my friends here who come from another plane. Um, a stranger from another, another distant city took it and made her angry. More outsiders, more strangers, more potential thieves, people that go through her oceans and seas. She will take more convincing and she is not alone. We are gods. It is sad, but true to say you must give us a reason to care. This world is important to us, yes. But it's as if you have a home. You care of your home. But if your home is worn down, torn down, burned down, some are able to find and make a new one. We are gods. You cannot assume we think as mortals do. Does that make sense to you? I think so. Yeah. It makes as much sense as anything. <laughs> you are the two. What gods do you follow? Fassa. <laughs> oh, so there's two of you. If I'm being honest, when I showed up here, I put my lot behind the rowers, but uh, truth is, this symbol hmm. is the closest thing to a god I've got. It stands for a lot where I'm from. And you said when you arrived, you followed who? Eroes, the god of victory. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> you all have made very interesting choices. How much do you know of, well, I suppose you could call them my siblings, my family? How much do you know of Heliod? <laughs> Everything I've heard, it seems like he's a pretty good guy. Mm. Mm. I know he's a little bit fickle, maybe a little bit uh, arrogant. Mm. Heed my advice. He has been in charge, has been in power for a very long time. And if your plan changes that, he will not follow you. He will not have it come to pass. You must offer the one in charge something of value. Then, Perforos. Well. More 
mortals have life. They have stories and tales and you do things that <laughs> to me, I enjoy them. It's dangerous and sometimes foolhardy. Sailors go out on waves that could topple their ships and they could die, but they do it. To uh, Perforos, you're more like toys. It sounds worse than it is. They love their toys. Uh, they enjoy their toys. They do not like to see their toys broken. They're a bit selfish. I believe that you can convince us, but it'll be a challenge. Phoenix and Mogus though, uh, those two. Those two may be easy. What do you know of them? I've been told Mogus is a good-looking guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, uh, I'm a minotaur. He's I, supposed to also be. So you I feel like Mogus you might know welcome looks. the challenge of other worlds to fight. Mm. Well, they enjoy deceit and slaughter, so. Yeah, I've known a couple like that. Mm-hmm. Be careful when you try to earn their favor. Because if they enjoy deceit and slaughter, make sure it is in association with each other and not you. Okay. Uh, yep. <clears throat> Sounds like solid advice. Don't let the gods slaughter you. I'm in. That's a good rule of thumb. Yeah, I kind of I'll live by that. Where will you go now? What will you do next? Well, according to our map, um, the nearest god to us is is I think Karametra. So we'll probably head to her next. Dean, what would you say? I know no, about Karametra. Sorry, I, I miss. I, I that was that was me. Riley out of character okay. saying the wrong god. Um, okay. Is it Ephara? Mm. Is it Ephara the one that's closest to us? Yes. Okay. Um, mm. uh, I will. Uh, sorry, there's a I'll lot. There's 15 both. gods. I'm sorry. As a Quite player, all right. No, it's you're good. Duty. There's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we kind of we change the order. Yes. Yeah. No worries. Um, Karametra is the god of the harvests, um, a bit further from here. But Ephara is the god of the polis, the goddess of civilization. Um. She is a paragon of order um, and values law and lawfulness above all else and organization. Hmm. Hmm. So you have a challenge, but I have one more challenge that I would like to see yourself, see you prove. Are you up for a challenge? Hey, I've never said no to a challenge yet. Always. We'll do what we can. <laughs> You're going to like this, Ruben. Um, <laughs> Dura, come here. Uh, Because you mentioned I could have something earlier. Mm -hmm. So... He reaches down uh, to Dura and looks him in the eye, grabs a little piece of lightning and hands it to Dura. And you see it take the shape of a javelin. Astarok's eyes go wide. Mm -hmm. because... Prove to me in front of me against my champion that you can do this. Ruben, is it okay if we roll initiative? Yes, roll initiative. <laughs> Ask. I used to have one of those. Uh, uh, the party and Dura. Yeah. Let's uh, add 
an initiative tracker. G- Gabe, you. Oh, wait, crap. I forgot what my stats were. <laughs> wait, Gabe, I, I just want to say, because you probably don't know this, but there's, or you maybe were told, you tell him? Nope. Okay. Um, this is a happy a, accident. A whole thing where Astaroth used to have a lightning javelin and lost it a long time ago and is still mourning the loss of his lightning javelin. Mm-hmm. It's been like a whole thing. <laughs> Oh, yeah. we, we threw it's it, great. and then we got portaled out of where we were, and they so had to, it, they had to get out of dodge super away, fast. and he didn't have the javelin anymore. <laughs> oh my god, it's pretty incredible. This is perfect. I almost I took it. one for my character just to troll Jordan, but I decided to take the staff instead. You nailed it. This is so good. It's so oh good. <laughs> That's a uh, eighteen for me. Nineteen minus one. Okay. I rolled a 21. 17. How dare you? God damn, for real. I got an 18. Wow. Uh, And Sophia? 17. Okay. Oh, sorry, 18. I forgot that I have a a plus one on this game, this character. Wow. Three of you have 18s? Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Oh, that is a little weird. Who had the 19? Or who had the who had a uh, that was me, it but it was a 19 minus one. <laughs> oh, okay. Who Wait, did we have a roll 18? I got a 21. Oh okay. oh, okay. Lydia has a 20. Nice. All right. Oh my um, gosh. And uh Karanos um sort of sits back, crosses a leg, and watches the action. Uh Lydia, I guess you're up first. Oh geez, I certainly am. Um so I look over at Thura uh, and I, I say, I'm really sorry about this. Um, and so I'm going to go in with my rapier and I'm going to see if I can, if I can hit. Are you sure we can't just talk about it? No. Okay. Well, uh, and I rolled a 13. Does 13 hit? Dura? No, it does not. Okay. Damn. Block with my shield. All right, well, that's my turn. Uh, Astarok. All right, Astarok goes, All right, do I, I'm, I'm, I'm not pulling my punches here, so uh, I, I hope there's some sort of, I don't know, d- divine intervention in place. Uh, let's go. And uh, he's going to try and swing with the axe. And that is a, uh, that's a 26. Yeah. That hits? Oh boy. Because <laughs> otherwise we're screwed. <laughs> uh, all right. That is 12 damage. But uh, but as actually, but as the axe comes down to Dora, um, Astarok twists it just a bit at the last minute and just whacks him with the flat of the axe. So to not actually like mm-hmm. to cut, cut him. Yeah. But he's just like. Oh, I said I wasn't going to pull my punches, but yeah. And you do notice, by the way, as you spin your axe and as the rapier flies through the air and as the shield deflects, there are wisps of purple smoke that follow each of these movements. And there appear there's like a orchestra playing behind you that plays epic battle music and the stars in the sky above you sort of swirl and dance in time with the music. It's, and and there's sort of flashing lights to a little bit of like a nightclub atmosphere as this uh, is sort of an entertainment. uh, It seems to Karanos who has a big smile on his face. Sophia. Unless Astarok, you have anything else? Sorry. Nope. That's it. Okay, uh, I am going to. I feel like since we're having a lightning duel, uh, I am going to use call lightning or lightning bolt. So no, no, call lightning, um, and use the storm clouds that are present in the space that we're in to summon this lightning bolt, and I'm going to call it at level uh, four, which is the highest that I can do. Um, and so suddenly out of that comes a blast of lightning. It's actually going to do an extra D10 worth of damage. 
And I need you to make a, what's the save on that? That's a dexterity saving throw. Okay, you did 17. save, so you only take part of this. Um, so let me just go ahead and roll that damage. Um, okay, that was 34 before your save. So Ooh. 34 before your save, meaning half that? Or? So it'll be, yeah, it'll be what? Six, that'll be what? Um, 17. 17. Got it. And it pushed you 10 feet away from me when it happens to. Sure. Perfect. Uh, you get shoved towards Karanos uh, as it is now your turn. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, as an action, I'm going to cast Guardian of Faith. A large spectral guardian appears and hovers for the duration in an unoccupied space of your choice you can see within range. I'm going to pick the spot that is five feet behind me. So you see a massive manifestation of Karanos, still smaller than the original form, but like lightning shifting from their body with their hands hovering uh, over Dota's body. And uh, then taking a page out of your book, Sophia, uh, there is also a hand that goes up and then comes down as uh, an ax made of lightning and he's casting spiritual weapon at fourth level. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> and is actually gonna take a strike at uh, Astarok. A Astarok sees the, uh, uh, the ax. Basically mimicking the way that your blow was. Yeah. Mm. Bring it on. Axe bros. Okay, let's see. That is Are you rolling an attack? To hit. Is this a, wait, yes. are you rolling an attack? Roll at advantage because you're in a temple of your god. Oh. Oh my god, that's a 23. Ooh. Yeah, no that that hits. <laughs> uh, that is 14 radiant damage. There you go. Anything else? Astrock holds uh, up his no. thing to block it. And it's just like, bring it on! It just goes, boom, and knocks him back. And he's like, oh, okay. It was brought. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, top of the round, Lydia. Okay, uh, Lydia is going to try to attack with her rapier again. And she's like, I, as much as I like seeing all the lightning, maybe uh, you don't have to necessarily lightning us, right? Like, that would be cool since we're all bros. So, Lydia, you're moving into uh, attack me, yes. right? So, when a hostile creature enters a space within 10 feet of the guardian, they have to make a deck saving throw. Oh. And I put it five feet behind me. Oh, okay. All righty, let's see how that goes. Uh, 11. Oh, no. no that, that does not save. I'm sorry. Um, okay. So you take 20 points of radiant damage. Oh, boy. That's it. And it's still Lydia's turn as uh, Karanos mm -hmm. is sort of orchestrating... Uh, the music and the imagery behind each of these combatants. Okay, so I try to go in again, I guess, with my rapier, because that's what I've got. Um, I'm going to roll... I got a 10. Um, so I go and I try to hit, but at this point I'm so damaged, it just kind of brings me straight to my knees. Um, and then I get up quickly, but it's not going to hit at all. All right. Uh, Astarok. Astarok, now that he's been knocked back, he kind of gets up and shakes it off. <laughs> Snorts out of his nose, and he's like, all right, I see how we're playing this now. <laughs> Gloves are off. And he's just going to, like, get down into, you know, a full-on linebacker pose. <laughs> and he charges 
at uh, at the yeah he, he charges at you and he charges I know he has to go through the guardian but whatever he's just gonna do it <laughs> okay. runs as fast as he can and just goes for the axe but I'll do the deck save first deck save I rolled an 18. So you take 10 points of radiant damage. Yeah. So Astrox starts uh, running through and you see the energy like hit him and he just like, like feeds off of it and kind of brushes it off and goes, let's start having fun. And I'm just going to bring two attacks down on you. First attack. That is a 16. Does that hit? Yes, it does. All right. That will deal 10 damage. And then the second attack. Oh, God. Uh, that is that is a... Uh, that's a seven. I don't think that's going to hit. No. <laughs> so after that, he hits with the first one and then goes for the second and you kind of dodge out of the way. And he goes, let's keep this going. And then I'm going to action surge and nice. uh, take two more attacks on you. <laughs> Because I saved it, which is very uncharacteristic. Okay, so that is a, uh, that's a 27. So I'm just going to assume that hits. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> and that is 13 damage. <sighs> and then final attack. That's enough. He goes down. Oh, he does. Ooh. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yes, he does. A- a- Astrock goes for like the last one and then it's just like, huh, uh, oh, wait, uh, you okay, right? I don't want to kill the guy. I will cast oh, healing I'm... word on him now that he's gone down. So that's going to give you back uh, eight eight health points. Do you see, my God? I told you they were. You could see they were good, but they were better than anyone could expect. There is a reason. I believe they can do it. I see you're right. I see you truly are right. They see danger. They see you strike them down. They see my visage. And still they charge ahead. I enjoy that. I enjoy that very much. Hmm. And a small, similar to the disc that you saw Krufix create, a four-inch diameter stone disc. This one, instead of the symbol, the eight-pointed star of Krufix, this one with the eye of Karanos sits in front of you. So at that point, uh, Dura is, he has plenty of spell slots left. He's, he's just going to heal you all back up. Like, I have, I have literally cure mm-hmm. wounds <laughs> all day um, all day oh, I, I level can one and two a moon a cure, a moon yeah. Yeah. Yes. oh yeah oh loving that we'll say oh, it all works oh, oh. <clears throat> our wounds are so cute <laughs> and then i think he just kind of bows and takes a step back to karenos's side and then I'd, I'd like, you know, D- DM you, please, please take over. I have, sure. I have had my fill of chaos. Fair enough. You I'll see you now and back away. I just go, hey, I like your moves. <laughs> I like your moves. Well, actually, actually, I, I would like to ask for one more, one more thing. Um, I think Dura walks up to you, Astarok. I was very impressed. You weren't bad someone yourself. T- someone told me you lost one. And hands you the javelin <laughs> of lightning. Yep. Oh, oh my god. Oh my I I I, I just need a and Astrox just throws a hug yeah. around Dora. <laughs> this means so much to me. Uh it's just like my old one. Thank you. I swear I wouldn't weight. cry. Carry the weight of the world, my friend. 
and I like I put my I kind of like put my arm awkwardly around him and try to like comfort him. So he's like crying, and I'm like, okay, okay, it's it's good. We want to fight, and he's okay. Oh, 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 wow, you really you really put it out there. Huh? Okay. <laughs> Oh, he he, he needed this. Yeah, wow, apparently. Yeah. I've got to tell Tutoru. <laughs> yes, right. Now, now please take over. <laughs> and <laughs> as the, the three of you uh, leave the uh, temple of Karanos, your second god checked off of your list. A few more to go, but with more information and a little bit of inspiration in your pockets. Um, Dura is standing next to his god. And he is uh, looking like a proud papa, as does Karanos, honestly. And Karanos shape changes back into the form of uh, the cloud of purple smoke, and the room fills with purple mist, and you can no longer see uh, your compatriot for this leg of your journey. You make it back to your ship. You uh, are eagerly greeted by Odie, the crab, who is excited to have you back. And you are able to depart the volcanic island of Karanos. And as you do so, head on to the next portion of your adventure and slightly less stormy skies. And that'll be the end of the episode, I do think. I have right. very, very fuzzy feelings. Oh, Gabe, you were amazing. <laughs> oh, you were so spectacular. Good. When you switched Holy into Karanos the very first time, I was like, oh, this is going to be amazing. It was so <laughs> good. Uh, the, the javelin of lightning thing was so unplanned. Such I an had accident. no oh idea. I, I I had a moment where I was like, you don't know. Wait, he must know. Ruben nope. must have told him. <laughs> didn't know. Well, I also said like five minutes before the show started, go ahead and take some magic items if you want. Um, and I was <laughs> like... And it was just like, you know, that's that's what was picked without any input from me. That is so funny. That I is had so no funny. idea any of that was coming. Dungeons so and Dragons, great. everybody. Love yeah. it. Um, that was that's amazing. Like a two season payoff. Um, that's like a two and a half season that payoff. Is, that is a two and a half season payoff. It's <laughs> really good. Uh, go ahead and tell the folks at home where they can find you. We'll start with Jordan and go around the horn. Hi, everybody. My name is Jordan Pridgen. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Jordan Pigeon. Um, also, uh, this, this is the only show I'm doing here on Saving Throw right now, but go watch back through the backlog of other shows we've done. I'm on a bunch of them. Um, Legacy and Wild Cards. We've got like three different campaigns of Wild Cards you can watch. So there's a whole bunch of backlog at Saving Throw you can go enjoy. Hey everybody, you can find me on Twitter at Riley J. Silverman or Instagram at Riley Silverman. This is actually a big week for me because on Friday I'm back on Heartbeats. My my guest starring role has now become a recurring character, so I'm back for the season finale. Mm. So that'll be on Ripley Improv on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Ripley Improv, uh, Friday 6 p.m. Pacific. Uh, and then on Saturday, my Doctor Who role-playing podcast, The Game of Rats, Lauren's doing our first live stream show. It's a special thing that we're doing, so that'll be you can check that out at, uh, at Rassilon Pod on Twitter and also you can check out now I have two pieces of my writing that are up on D&D Beyond and uh, maybe keep an eye out on the D&D Beyond streams this week maybe maybe like tomorrow yeah. or something who knows what will happen so we'll see what oh, goes okay. on uh, maybe maybe someone will be talking about some mm. stuff maybe just mm. put that out there as a thing uh, uh, you can just find me at Twitter at Danielle Radford. You can find me on Instagram at Danielle underscore Radford. Um, you know, watch the Honest trailers. I help write them, and they turn out pretty good sometimes. So uh, that is one of the ways you can support me. And everything else I do, I always just throw it up on the social so y'all can find it. Thank you. And I know the timing now. Hi, I'm Gabe. You can find me on Twitter, Twitch, pretty much anywhere else on the internet. Um, I do a couple different shows. I'm on a show on Friday where we're playing through Star Wars. Uh, I have a finale for a Cyberpunk Red show on Thursday. I don't know times because I'm a lazy human being. So that's on Twitter. Uh, but this this has been fantastic. I like it, it's a big reminder of why like I can. I can sit at a new table of people and we can all be there to have fun and tell a fun story. And it's like, you it, it feels like you've been playing like games with these characters for days, but. It was uh, pretty damn fun. Yeah. <laughs> that was spectacular. So good. Uh, I'm, I'm Ruben Bressler. 
Uh, you can follow me everywhere at Mox Ruby, M O X R E U B Y. Tomorrow night, I'm going to be on the Life Action Roleplay Network playing Prosperity uh, with Avon Gonzalez, the designer of that game, oh. where we will, it's the artisanal tea blending board game. And huh. that is a thing I'll be playing tomorrow, which is great. Um, and there's tons of great stuff here on this channel. You should come back on Sunday, absolutely, for an all new new pantheon academia our anime inspired rpg using the over arms system uh the fun of that begins at 4 p.m pacific and the cast has r.i.p mika cb critical bard aki eric reichert and of course the gm stephen pope um thank you so much for joining us gabe this was spectacular um this was so fun oh my god i'm glad you asked uh, i'm so i'm so glad that that you uh leapt at the opportunity when i said hey what do you want to play a god and you're like absolutely <laughs> um <laughs> yes. and uh thank you all so much for watching um this has been uh, a, a delightful episode and we're uh so pleased that you've joined us if you have uh is this your first episode there is a backlog of the broken pact that you can follow uh, on our youtube and our podcast networks um, I assume we're going to be raiding tomorrow. somebody at some point. Uh, also, I don't... let's just point out real quick to tease. Keep an eye no on rating. Saving Throw space for the next month, because Saving Throw has got some fun, exciting yes. things in the pipe that we, we're not quite ready to reveal, but Dom is working on some really cool stuff. Uh, so I think I think around the start of next month, you'll see some some of that coming in. So uh, Dom's been listening to a lot of your feedback, and they decided to roll some stuff out. So we'll see what happens. Yes, and if you aren't already, please follow the channel, subscribe, and also follow at Saving Throw Show on Twitter and Instagram and do all of those things. And we do have a Patreon, so go go ahead and visit the uh, the Saving Throw Show Patreon. Um, yeah, no no raid tonight. Um, please uh, support other Dungeons and & Dragons and uh, role-playing game streamers near you. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time on The Broken Pact. Good night, everybody.